Hola, ¿qué tal? En este video Hi. Vamos a ver In this video, we're going to see the workflow behind changing this image from this to this, which I think is much more attractive. Starting with the original raw image open in Camera Raw, the first thing we'll do is level the image, as it's a bit of an angle towards the right, as we can see on the screen. We'll start using the Level tool, and we'll look for a reference for the horizon, which in this case is the entrance to the restaurant behind the model. So we trace a line, and we make the crop. I'm going to make it a little more exact, taking the letters into account, so that everything is perfectly level, so the look will be much more ordered. Like that, it's perfect. We'll play with the temperature, taking into account the fact that the model should look believable, at least now at the beginning. But we will give her a slightly colder tone, which keeps the warmth of the lights in front of the model. And we make some adjustments to the contrast and the shadows. Then we go to the fourth tab, Tone, Saturation and Luminosity. And in the channels, we're going to raise the warm tones in front of the model. Then we'll play with the purples and the blues, but we should be careful with all three tabs in the tool to ensure that what we're doing looks believable. Let's go to the blues without going too far. And we'll go to luminosity. In the blues, we'll wash some more and give it some intensity, giving it a little more light. And in the tone, we'll give it a lighter blue color. My personal preference, but I like it better that way. Also, the magentas being careful with the left cheek so that it's more believable and not oversaturated, as well as the little lights in front of her. Also, that way we create a contrast between warms and colds that is attractive. In the first tab, we shift the tone a little to give it a finish that suits our liking. In this case, I did it to my liking, but you can go for something different, always in a subtle way, so there aren't huge changes and so that the image ends up believable, so the editing retains something of reality. Since I lost the yellows when I dropped the temperature, I've gone back to the previous tab to bring them back a little. In the yellow channel, I couldn't affect it as there were practically oranges, so I'll adjust the temperature and go back to the yellows, and here, now I can play with them. And now I can make the whole shot a little colder to get that harmony between colds and hots. I think that like that looks pretty good. A little clarity that will give it some detail. And afterwards, we can play with the blacks and the whites, the sliders. But I try not to touch them too much as I try to give the photo the detail I like in camera. In the third tab, we add a little focus. About there would be good. Then we open the image with Photoshop. Once you've opened the image in Photoshop, the first thing we're going to do is reframe the crop to an appropriate fit. 3-2, we crop more or less over there. I don't want to lose the name of the sign in the background, so it's more or less... Yeah, just like that. Perfect. I don't lose anything from the two lights. The model is more or less centered, and the sign as well. And there we have it. Good, so I duplicate the layer to leave the untouched sample layer. The first thing we will do with the camera raw filter tool, I'll change the temperature a little. We go back to the fourth tab, tone and saturation. We retouch it a few times until we get a finish we like. Here, for example, I'm giving it a light blue tinge. Blues are always modified with blues and aquamarine. A little in the warm, so they go towards the yellow without losing anything. 
a little in the saturation of the yellows, and now I have a nice contrast between colds and hots, or warm tones. So we'll play with these sliders until we get the result we like the best. As I said before, be careful with the saturation as these marks can be left, which on top of looking ugly, cause the photo to lose quality. More or less like this, like that is good. Once again, we're looking at the modified image, which I duplicate again. And now I'll give a lens flare to both lights in the background. Filter, interpret. So then we pick from the five types of lens flare that it offers us. The one I like to use most often is the third one. Okay, so we center the lens flare in the left-hand light. We give it a suitable strength so we don't overexpose the whole area, but we still see it. And we do the same on the same layer, but with the other light. Interpret, lens flare. So then we pick, and we give the second light a lower intensity since its position is further back. We hit OK. And now we can play with the opacity of the layer so it's not so obvious. But with the light still spilling over the image so that the lens flare can be appreciated. What we can do is make a layer mask since the light beam that's in front of the model removes contrast. So we can go over it, uncovering the layer mask to allow the bottom mask that has no light to spill through. We should do it very subtly, so we can't notice it. But in this case, I think that playing with the opacity of the layer should be enough. We go to levels. We raise the blacks a little, so we have the contrast we're looking for. More or less there. The face is more contrasted. More or less there would be good. And maybe with a layer mask we can uncover those black areas which are too full to allow the layer below to be seen. Of which we didn't affect the levels and it looks much better. If we make a mistake we can select the white color, we can recorrect a little as the case is. There's the difference. So there we can see that the light coming from the two lights is more obvious. Let's leave the opacity there. And since we have a layer mask, I'm going to uncover it a little more, but with an opacity of 30% on the face of the model, so that veil is lifted as the lights are hitting her back. They're not really hitting her face. We merge these two layers. We leave the bottom layer as a reference point which is a habit I have, and I always do it like that, and in that way I can look at the before and the after. Great. Let's go to the Nick Collection filters, and here we have two options. We can go to the paid Nick Collection filters. There are still links for when they were property of Google, which you can find online. In this case, I have all the tools, and we're going to give a little more life to the photo. Nick Collection, Viveza. And here we'll play with the sliders. A little structure give the photo some more detail, about there. A little bit of contrast without taking it too far. We'll adjust the shadows a little colder. 
We can do that with the temperature bar or by playing with the red. Since we gave an excess of cold, we can play with the red to compensate a little bit. We saturate the image a little more. Here in the tone we can get results like this one. These tones are very in at the moment. It can change the look of the photo quickly, but I always advise being subtle and leaving the skin more or less the real shade. We shouldn't change the tone too much and have the model end up green. So, applying the filter, the difference will be like so. There we have it, like that. We go to adjustments, color mixer, I convert the top layer to monochrome. We edit this process, this black and white, in an aggressive way. Let's bring the brightness up, the mid-tones towards the shadows so the contrast is higher. Now we go to brightness and contrast. It's a very destructive tool, but let's give it a little touch of contrast so it looks stronger. With the overexposed, underexposed tool, let's play with the shadows. In this case, we'll overexpose and let's give a little more light and life to the eyes. We overexpose mid-tones because I want to affect the iris and the white part of the eye. And we can overexpose just the highlights, so affect only the white part. Even though it's a little too much, don't worry. Using the highlights, I want to give a little more contrast between the lettering on her clothes and the clothes herself. So they're much more white and luminous. In areas with no white, it doesn't work. There's not a huge difference. So we have to go to mid-tones for this. And the light parts, for example, the trousers and all the clothes, they start to stand out. We give it a feeling of more luminosity and more volume. Let's go around these areas, also the little flares with a small brush of the right size for the area we're working on. The reflections of the hair, all these little curls, the more patience the better. And about there would be more or less it. We convert this layer into blend mode luminosity and check out the difference of what we've done. The photo has gained a lot of visual impact even if it's too much. And if it is, we can play with the opacity of that layer in blend mode luminosity. When we have it, we merge the layers, and here we have what we've done. That's the result from where we started. I think there's a lot of difference. And now we're going to play creatively with the glasses, as an example. So we'll start with the eyes, a little bit in the iris at 100%, perfect. We deactivate the rapid mask option and select invert. We duplicate the layer and set it to the blend mode overexposed color. You can see that the eyes are brighter, maybe too much. We should bring down the opacity. I like to zoom out so I can see the whole image, not only the crop. Something like that would be good. We combine the layers, we duplicate it again. Layer mask. And we're gonna add color to the glasses. What I do is, the first thing is, paint the layer mask on in black to allow the lower layer through. Right now we're not going to see anything because we haven't done anything to the lower layer, they're identical. But I'm going to draw it 100%. If we go outside the area, we don't see the result yet, but we will be able to correct it simply by painting it again in white. Go over the whole glass, 
of the glasses and check it out. We go to the layer below, image, adjustments, tone, in this case, and we can change the tone of the glass, you see? Let's give it a color. In this case, with the tone, since there's a lot of play and a lot of mixing of warm and cold tones, I don't like the result. Um, what we can do is adjustments, color balance, and we go straight for the blues. I like it like this a bit more. We give it a blue tinge, which is the predominant color in the photo, because anything warm would go with the background in the logo. But I prefer the blue and the yellow, which goes with the light effects at the front. It's a little too obvious, so that blue tone is the one I like the best. More or less, more or less like that would be nice. About there. Yeah, there. So we hit OK. Once we've made the layer mask, we can play with many things. Here we can see the tone. We've drawn the areas that haven't been covered, since now we can see what we're doing. And if we look at the second layer, it's totally blue in the right-hand miniature. So we paint where it's not yet uncovered, with black, and we correct the parts that we left in white. Let's give it a 100% opacity to this gradient, as what I want to get is the gradient you can see here, with color in the bottom part and at the top have the blue, but it doesn't stand out too much, and I'm happy to leave it like that. I merge the layers once again, I duplicate the layer mask, and now with a soft brush we will draw on the red part of her clothing. And we'll try to give it a tone that's similar to the reds, the pinks, the fuchsias of the background. We replace the color. We choose the color we wish to modify. And in tone, we can do everything that you see here. And it would only affect the color we've selected. In blues, it wouldn't stand out too much. I think that we would have to take it up to about there so it goes with the background. Or we could take a sample from the background and leave it basically identical. A little more light, about there. And OK. This little corner remains, which is red instead of the pink fuchsia color. I'm quite obsessive with all these little details, and I recommend that you don't skip them, you don't ignore them. Perfect. We merge the layers. Im image adjustments, color balance, to give it one last touch. I like to have balanced color in the whole image, as that tone is the same for the whole image, and it's so it's not patchy in areas. It's up to each person's individual taste to leave a result that you like the best. There are no established rules. And the last thing, image adjustments, levels, brightness, contrast. A little more light, the level of contrast necessary, so the image has strength and is powerful. We overexpose in the shadows to bring those dark areas back a little bit, which have ended up with a vignette that I don't like too much. Something like that. And that's the difference between the original image and the one we've put together here. This is the raw, which we'll open again, directly without touching it. Y 
And here we can see the difference between the original and the final work. So file, save as, and we'll save our photo. In this case, it's a JPEG. We could save it in a TIFF file if we wanted, if we're going to work on it again. In this case, I save it as a JPEG with maximum quality, so we can expand it, put it in an album if it's big enough, it's big enough for that, and also web size, which is very important. But first, I add my signature, so at least what's going on the internet has a signature. Image, image size, and all I do when I upload it to the internet is change the resolution from 300 pixels to 72 pixels, which is the resolution of most monitors. This is okay, we give it just a little focus. Image, focus, soft focus. And normally the level I give it when the image is already at 72 pixels are 25, 1, and 0. Perfect. And that's how I save my image in web quality, which is now zoomed in. But to see on a mobile phone, it's more than enough resolution. So export, web, maximum image quality. Make sure that bicubic is selected, which is more focused on quality, as it's the best for the reductions. We've dropped the size of the image to much less than one megabyte. We save it on a desktop and we've given it the name web to recognize that it's the small version. And now we finished. I hope you enjoyed this and I invite you to check out the rest of the editing courses online. Gus Heijo.